Okay, good morning everyone. So let us now have the echo literacy. Overview. This module will discuss echo literacy. This is one of the 21st century literacies. In this module, sustainable development will be emphasized as one of the impact of echo literacy. Let us first define sustainable development. When we say sustainable development, this is improving the lives of every individual living in a particular community without compromising the future generation. Now, the question is, why this one? of the main or of the major impact of echo literacy so in this module we will we'll be discussing this okay so what are what is now the learning outcome explain the rules of echo literacy teachers learners and citizens for a sustainable development environmental education we are now at a critical point with many environmental issues such as climate change and rampant environmental destruction alienation from nature greatly contributes to the aggravation of these environmental problems ecological literacy is important to business and political leaders and levels of education. Now question, why ecological literacy is important to business, to political leaders, and to the levels of education? First, to business. Because of course, we all know that business is all about the industry. Who provide us the, the, the things that we need? Who supplies our demands? Again, who provides our, our needs such as food, clothing, and anything that we want to have? It is in the field of business. So what is the connection of this to ecological literacy why is this important to business for us to be able to attain sustainable development the business sector needs now to realize that they just need to process they just need to manufacture products that is relevant that is just exactly enough of the needs of the people in the community which what we are trying to, to to say here is we should just manufacture products that is needed by the people that we should not over consume the raw materials the resources of the environment because time will come that if we will not have this balance it will lead to the destruction of the environment and we will never achieve the sustainable development and if the sustainable development will not be achieved then people will be the first one to suffer because of the destruction of the environment. Okay? So, actually, people are the reason why what is now happening, why our environment is degrading. People are the reason what is now happening to our environment. 
So therefore, if people are the main reason of this destruction, people will also be the reason to build up, to heal our mother nature. So we have here political leaders. Why this is very important? Because political leaders are the only way to influence people what is the right thing to do. They have they are the people in the position to make a law, to make rules and policies that the people needed to abide. Political leaders have the power to tell to the people what is the right thing to do in the environment. And then we have here education. One of the main roles of education is to transform individuals to become a better citizens. And one of the things that they need to integrate to the curriculum is this ecological literacy. Explaining to the students how important is preser preserving our environment and presenting to the students what will happen if we will not be doing something to save our mother earth. Ecological literacy refers to an individual's understanding not or ecological concepts but also of his or her place in the ecosystem. The term ecological literacy was first introduced by David Orr in 1989 in his essay, Ecological Literacy. He indicated that knowing, caring, practical competence form the foundation for ecological literacy. So meaning that includes caring and practicing what is needed to be done in our environment. He pointed out that the root of environmental crisis is the individual's inability to think about ecological patterns system of causation and long-term effects of human actions. So here, or pointed out that the root of the destruction of environment is because people are not thinking about what will be the consequence of the abuse of the of the bad things that the people are doing in the environment because these people are just thinking that that the resources that we have in the environment is unlimited because what they see is it's plenty anyway but they don't realize what will happen if they will not going to stop the bad things that they are doing now, the destruction that they are doing now in the environment. So if every day this, their, their, their bad acts are always being done, then well, of course, time will come <clears throat> that this unlimited will become limited. Thus, he emphasized the importance of experience in one's natural environment that can enable humans to shift perspective from one of the economic emphasis to one of the balance among economics, ecology, and 
equals shape. Or also argued that the ecologically literate person understands the dynamics of the environmental crisis, which includes an, under an understanding of how people have become so disruptive. So here, it is clearly said that if you are an ecologically literate person, then you know the pattern how environment is being degraded or being distracted. So therefore, identifying school students' ecological literacy levels is a necessary step to investigate their behavior, attitudes, sensitivity, and behavioral intention. So in order to create awareness among students, it is important to foster correct knowledge to ensure positive approach to the environment. So therefore, for, for, to avoid this destruction in the environment, students must be provided with correct knowledge with an accurate information with regards to the patterns why destruction is happening in the environment. For these students to become fully aware, and if these students will become fully aware, then that will now lead for these students to stop or to avoid doing such thing that will lead for the destruction of the environment. So this will also help students to have to have positive attitude towards our environment. Kayla Glo also stated that positive attitudes and values toward the environment are accord with the good knowledge. That is true. If the students were provided with correct, with accurate information, then that will lead for them to have this positive attitudes and values because they know what is the right thing to be done for the sake of saving our environment, for the sake of doing what is right to the environment. So teachers need to discuss, need to present clearly what are the dos and don'ts in the environment? So developing environmentally responsible behavior requires correct knowledge about climate change, the cause of global warming, carbon emissions, and carbon footprint. There has been an increasing concern with enhancing ecological literacy in the society. The current literature on ecological literacy emphasizes the role of scientific knowledge and ecological thinking in identifying cause-effect relationships in social environmental systems in order to allow more enlightened decision-making. Therefore, its primary pedagogical roles are cognitive and experimental. In this, it differs from the broader concept of environmental literacy, which incorporates civic literacy that pertains to change in values and behaviors and thus also contains affective and moral pedagogical goals. So later, we will discuss the difference between eco-literacy, ecological literacy, and environmental literacy. So ecological literacy is meant to enable conscious and participant citizens to make informed decisions or take action on environmental issues. Efforts in this direction include books by experienced ecologists for the general public, of which two outstanding examples are Levine and Esteban Hinn. Characterizing an eco-literate person. 
Dr. Tom Cook of Lakehead University characterized an ecologically literate person of the 21st century as the responsible, lifelong learner who strives to improve the human condition and the environment within the context of self, human groups, the biosphere, and the ecosphere. The ecologically literate person, in order to achieve the aforementioned ultimate goal, should become first an inquirer who actively secures the basic skills and knowledge in order to carry out ecological responsibilities. This also enables her to reach her own potential and place in the physical and natural environment. Take note that it is the environment who first land on that place that you are in. So you are just like actually a foreigner to that environment. And in return, that this environment allows you to become part of it. The question is, what will you do? It's easy. What you need to do is to have an initiative to ask, to know what are the things that you should do, not to destroy, but to maintain, and to improve the environment in which you are presently living. To become an eco literate person is being responsible enough. If you are responsible enough, then what you will do now, again, is to have this initiative to do what is the right thing to be done. It is not an excuse that you don't know what is the good thing, the good act to be done. Because again, as a part of that community, you should ask. You should, you should make a way for you to be able to know what are the things to be done in that community for you to have a contribution for the betterment of the environment. Next is a reflective learner who understands the value and limitations of human knowledge, the power and limitations of the natural world. The role of intuition in real-life pursuits and the role of self as it is manifested in one's personal narrative. So, to become an equality person is you should also become a reflective learner. But there are times really that, of course, we are not perfect. We do we can commit something that we sometimes regret because again, we did not do our part. That is to ask. So that's why you will always say, I didn't mean to do that. So like what I've said, we are not perfect. There are times that we do something in which we do not mean to do it. That's just because of the situation. So, if ever this happens to you, have some time, have a moment of silence to reflect that, okay, next time, next time, I will not be doing this thing anymore, such as, like, there is no trash can. So, what you did is just to throw away your trash anywhere in which this simply throwing of let's say small thing in the environment can cause 
great great destruction to the environment. Because of course, you're not just the only one doing this. So try to reflect of every actions that you did in which you think did something wrong to the environment. Next is intelligently self-directed. Who engages in self-appraisal, sets new learning objectives, develops plans to achieve those objectives, carry out those plans in a flexible, inquiry-directed manner, and reflects on the whole process. So, intelligently self-directed. So, meaning to say, you do not wait for someone to push you to do something good. But it should come in your, to your inner self. That since you know that that is the right thing to be done, so therefore you should do it. Again, there is no need for someone to supervise, to monitor what are the good things that you're doing, but instead... It is within yourself because you know what is the right thing to be done. So morally responsible who governs action with precepts that maintain harmonious relationship. So at least being calm that even if you see someone not doing good in the environment, just be calm and just tell. Perhaps if that is a friend, then you can say your point of view that, for example, you have seen a friend throwing something in the environment, then you just simply say, you know what? Then that simple will make you be great destruction to the community in which we live, and you know, I you know I'm just aware of all of this because we will be the one to suffer if we will continue to do this in our environment. So you can just simply. Be, tell it right to that person in a calm way. Not necessarily that you are going to scold right away. You just have to explain your point of view. Then maybe that person will is not closed minded. That that person will soon maybe not. He will not listen right away. That maybe to some point that he is already in their house. Then he will realize what you said. Ecologically responsible, who embodies ecological ideas in daily life and seeks self transcendence, who moves beyond the limitations of personal ego by identifying with human groups, flora and fauna. What is fauna? Flora are the flowers, and fauna are the animals. Ecosphere that transcend individual life and scope and Time. The ecologically literate person of the 21st century has a positive view of life, grounded in the faith of interconnectedness, and has the capacity to competently perform significant life work and related tasks. Such a view enables her to look upon the human experience positively and all living things compassionately. Try going to or try experiencing a hiking. If you are already in the peak or even just on the way going to the peak, there will be this interconnectedness that you will have this positive view of life. That, that is natural 
but once you are exposed to that kind of view, then there is this interconnectedness from the creator and to what you are doing right now. It's like the nature is telling you something, a positive thought that will make you not give up, that will enlighten you, that will replenish the, the energy that already drained the cause of different circumstances that you that you've experienced so just try <clears throat> having a hiking or go somewhere that is <clears throat> green that is full of trees that is with full bloom of flowers where you can think in that and I'm telling you by going to that place you will really feel the presence of the creator and you will have this positive view of life environmental literacy ecological literacy and eco-literacy so frameworks of eco-literacy exhibit a high degree of similarity with frameworks for environmental literacy in that both sets include similar affective knowledge, cognitive skills, and behavioral components. However, what most differentiates eco-literacy from environmental literacy is the clear emphasis on sustainability and the introduction of spiritual, holistic components expressed in terms of celebration of creation, spirit, and reverence for the earth, <coughs> and expansion of the soul. An ecoliterate person is prepared to be an effective member of sustainable society with well-rounded abilities of head, heart, hands, and spirit, comprising an organic understanding of the world and participatory action within and with the environment. So for environmental literacy, the general conceptions of environment that is problem filled of values, dominant educate, educational objectives develop problem solving skills from diagnosis to action, develop a system of ethics, adopt environmentally responsible behavior. So meaning the focus of environmental literacy is more of etiquette, environmental etiquette, okay? So this is more of presenting what should be done, okay? So this is all about developing a system for the people to adopt what needs to be done in the environment. So the primary pedagogical approaches is cognitive. Why cognitive? Because it will tell you what are the things to be done in the environment. Pragmatic. Because by knowing all of these things, is you should also apply it in real life. Affective, learn it by heart so that you can apply it. Then moral because of the etiquette that should be followed. Example of strategies, case study, issue and analysis, problem solving project, 
analysis and clarification of values, criticism of social values. So ecological literacy, the general conceptions of environment is object of study system. So this is ecological is all about the facts, the knowledge. Okay, so acquire knowledge of ecological, dominant educational objectives, acquire knowledge of ecological concepts and principles, develop skills related to scientific method, observation and experimentation, develop systems, thinking, analysis and synthesis, understand environmental realities and view of informed decision making. So again, in ecological literacy, the main point here is more of the facts and more of the knowledge that the students need to be aware of. So this is just more of the idea. So that's why this is cognitive. The primary pedagogical approach is cognitive and experiential. Why cognitive? This, again, this is more of the knowledge of the facts and why experiential in order to decide that that is really true then there is a need to experiment okay to be exposed on that thing for them to be able to decide that this is really <coughs> that this fact is really true that this pattern is true so example of strategies is observation demonstration experimentation case study Environmental system analysis, construction of ecosystem models. So, eco literacy. This is now the general conceptions of environment is shared resource for sustainable living. So, dominant edu educational objective promote and contribute to the economic development that addresses social equity and ecological sustainability. Develop the many dimensions of one's being in interaction with all aspects of environment. <clears throat> Develop an organic understanding of the world and participatory action in and with the environment. So you will see now the difference between, although it seems that they are just all the same, but some part of them is different. <clears throat> For example, in environmental literacy, the focus is more on, on adapting a system that will tell to the, to the learners what is good and what is bad. So the focus is more of the etiquette. What are the do's and don'ts in the community? So in ecological literacy, the focus is more on the knowledge more on the facts so that's why we do an experiment just for them to prove that this is really the idea of all these things in eco literacy this is no more of participatory that the learners they need now to contribute for the betterment of the not just for the betterment but also for the sustainability of the environment. So again, in eco literacy, there and the action there should always be present. Action of every individuals that they are now doing what is good to the environment to the point that they have this. <coughs> This concern, this concern to the environment that in all aspects of the environment is they are aware what to do. Greening initiatives in colleges and universities. Increased awareness of environmental degradation and concern for the rehabilitation have prompted colleges and universities to green their campuses. A good example of this is our university. 
our university is pushing through a greener college. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of the projects for the this for this year's founding anniversary, one of the programs is to plant trees in order for our community to become greener. Green Campus is a place where environmentally responsible practice and education go hand in hand and where environmentally responsible tenants are born out of example. So another thing that pops up on my mind is that, again, if I'm not mistaken, I heard that, I just heard that one of the requirements that is being pushed by the Commission on Higher Education is students in college will just graduate if they were able to grow plants. Not necessarily plants, but things. The Green Campus Institution is a model environmental community where operational functions, business practices, academic programs, and people are interested providing educational and practical value to the institution, the region, and the world. So this is very important. So just imagine a community where there are lots of trees. It's very comfortable to live in, especially nowadays that the house of the sun is really not good to our health. Just imagine a community where in there are lots of trees compared to a community where in there are no trees. Okay, so just start to imagine the situation. So gaining initiatives, although challenging and demanding, yield significant benefits in the long run. Yes, that is really true. Environmental and economic sustainability, a system-wide culture or sustainability helps preserve and enhance what the institution value today as well as for the future. A reputation as a leader through example, as colleges and universities offer courses in environmental management, engineering, law and regulations, and assessment, greening initiatives provide them opportunities to practice what they preach and make their mark as environmental leaders. Colleges and universities need to examine their own organizations and implement on their own campuses what they and the public expect their industry to do. Economic benefits, a routine curriculum-based environmental audit program that reveals waste and inefficiency associated with campus activities coupled with the identification and environment friendly alternatives can yield significant cost savings for the institution. Real life work experience for your students, environmental audits and pollution prevention evaluations can be integrated into the curriculum, providing students with hands-on investigative and problem-solving experience that they can take with them when they enter the workforce. This experience not only makes your students more marketable, it also provides them with the kinds of broad thinking skills that allow them to succeed and thrive once they are employed. Improve quality of life in the campus. A green campus is a cleaner safer and healthier place to live and work. Ecological literacy is a form of transformative education that requires shift in three related areas, perception, conception, and action. So what you see, what you conceive, and what you do. In schools, teachers are also required to shift emphasis to the following. From parts to who, subjects are to be taught as integrated, not as isolated units in the curriculum. So you do not say, okay, we'll have, we will have a subject for equal literacy. 
Instead, you integrate it to your different subjects from parts to the world. From objects to relationships, an ecosystem is a community. Communities are characterized by sets, networks, or relationships. Schools put premium on relationship-based processes such as cooperation, collaboration, and decision-making by consensus. Okay, so from objects to relationship. So objects, it's not just a thing. But also, there is a relation why there's a need to emphasize the importance of the ecosystem because we will not, of course, can, can live forward without, without thinking of the place where we live and the place where we live is the environment that we have now so the question is how do we how do we live now with our environment do you abuse the place in which you live because if you are abusing this place in which you live then it will bounce back to us so what do I mean by this is just a clear example of this is the climate change. So you see what is the impact of climate change to humans. So this should treat our environment as a partner. It's not just a thing that is already there, but also what should we do for us to have a good relationship with our environment. So from objective knowledge to contextual knowledge, the shift requires one to explain properties of the parts within the context of the whole or in terms of environments and systems. So knowledge to contextual knowledge. So knowledge is just purely the idea. But contextual knowledge is putting this idea into practice. So you know that these are the things that should be done. You are aware of those ideas. But what is important is you can put it into actions. And you can contribute. And for that, by doing that, you can contribute something to the environment. So what is the sense of knowing those ideas if you're not going to use it? So practice, utilize the idea. From quantity to quality assessment, subtradition really emphasizes standardized testing in terms of quantities, numeric scores, and measurements. Schools are challenged to design this testament more adequate than the standardized test if they are to practice this principle. So quantity, it's more, okay, I, I, I was able to pass the exam on eco, on environment or something or about the environment. But the question is, can you apply this in the real life? So teachers are being challenged now to have practicalities, to have an assessment that will measure the student's skills. Okay, because it's more of quality. So if the students can practice what they have learned, then that is better. From structure to process, systems are dynamic and evolving. Thus, the understanding of living structures is linked to understanding renewal, change, and transformation. This shift is embodied in project-based learning, which highlights the application of knowledge within evolving real-life context. Structure is nothing without processing it. Okay. From contents to patterns, when we do maps of relationships, 
you discover certain configurations of relationships that appear again and again. We call these configurations patterns. Instead of focusing on what a living thing, on what a living system is made of, we study its patterns. Pedagogically, the shift reminds us of the importance of integrating art into programs of study. This enables children, even at young age, to recognize and express patterns. Whether we talk about poetry, literature, visual arts, performing arts, and music. So here, in contents to patterns, it's more of not focusing on what, but on how. Like, what are you, what are you planting? So instead of asking that, you, what's more important is how do you plan that, okay? After knowing what is it. So, if if you know the process or how, then at least one day you will know how to do it. So you know the pattern.